Hello, my friends, and welcome to another weekly episode. This week, and specifically today, recording this on Memorial Day, um, the thoughts that come to my mind certainly are thoughts and feelings of gratitude. So today's topic is gratitude. Gratitude as a daily practice. Gratitude in the sense of what opportunities exist for me to teach gratitude as part of my legacy How do we teach it? The question comes up. We live it. And so as I go through some of these thoughts on gratitude, I hope that you'll be open to the application in your own life. Evaluate yourself. You know, do you have a daily gratitude practice? So we know lots of studies, research papers have been done on the benefits of approaching your life from a place of gratitude. Some of those things like experiencing fewer aches and pains and exercising more often and being more physically fit because of the energy that we have for life, uh, sleeping more soundly. We even see that some reports and, and studies have said that it will increase our life expectancy by up to seven years. Uh, those with an attitude of gratitude tend to be more physically and mentally resistant. There's reduced rates of depression. Uh, They have a greater empathy for others, increased self-esteem, more appreciative uh, of other people's accomplishments, and they tend to have a stronger, more satisfying level of satisfaction in their relationships. Eckhart Tolle stated that acknowledging the good that you already have in your life is the foundation for all abundance. Gratitude starts with a commitment to first being aware. Are we able to see and feel and sense and touch the things that in in our life have meaning and value? Recap that, you know, we've talked about how we train our, our mind. We train the filter of our mind to either accept or reject that which it deems unuseful or foreign. So are we training our mind to look for, and again, this presence and this awareness, are we training our mind to look for the things in our life that have meaning? Are we able to see and have the time and space to see the things that are valuable in our life? Uh, there may be times where we get so frantic and, and so pulled between all of the different things that we may be working on, uh, different efforts that we're engaging in. Again, gratitude, uh, I believe, is is a commitment to awareness, a commitment to look around and, and to be open to the things that are beautiful in our life. And some of those things uh, may not be beautiful until we choose for them to be. And so as I you know, continue down this thought about gratitude, I wonder if some people are so tied to controlling their lives that they fight against the exercise of looking for things to be grateful for. Some might even go to the efforts of of being so uh, resistant to looking for the good things in their life as a way to validate their sadness or their misery. Have you ever met somebody that, you know, you can do everything you that you can and and try and all the efforts to help them see something differently in their life or see things in a more beautiful way, uh, express more gratitude, only to find an argument on the other side of that exchange and a justification for why things are bad in their life. Somebody recently asked me what I'm most grateful for. Uh, For me, that's easy. Um, the thing that I find most meaningful in my life is really the simplicity of a moment. Moments with loved ones, my children, my spouse, a sunrise or a sunset, a pause in thought, or just even an awareness of each breath. I love the poem from Sarah Teasdale titled Barter. In it, she has this line that has just always stood out to me, and you've probably heard me quote it before. It says this, Life has loveliness to sell. Buy it. 
and never count the cost. In my life, the most valued elements always come with an eternal perspective and gratitude for the exchange with each moment that's gifted us. It's a gratitude for something far bigger than myself. In the book by, uh, having trouble remembering uh, the author's name, uh, Ethan Hawke. In the book by Ethan Hawke titled uh, Rules for a Night, he shares a thought on gratitude. He said, the only intelligent response to the ongoing gift of life is gratitude. I love that. The only intelligent response to the ongoing gift of life is gratitude. And he goes on to say, for all that has been, a knight says, thank you for all that it has, or for all that it is to come. A knight says, yes. So as I reflect upon the things that I want in my own life, more particularly that I want for my children as they exist and reside in the home, as they prepare to go out of the home and to start their own lives and families, it's my prayer and my hope for them that they will develop an ongoing practice and feeling of gratitude. And it's not a gratitude for mom and dad, although that may be something that they decide on their own, but it's more than anything a reverence for life and an awareness of the things that surround them day in and day out. And for them to see those things and be grateful for the wanderings in their life. Gratitude is an internal practice as well as an external practice. By internal, I mean the opportunity to identify things about ourselves, about our immediate world, things that we can focus on, that we can focus our energy around being grateful for. That is an internal practice. The external practice becomes looking for and watching for the things of value in others. You know, oftentimes we judge quickly or we dismiss somebody's contribution or we look down upon somebody else. But are we really looking for the good? Are we looking for those things that are of high value and high meaning with everyone around us and even in the world around us? There's a quote by Dieter F. Uchtdorf on gratitude. He shared some of his thoughts. He, he goes on to say, we sometimes think that being grateful is what we do after our problems are solved but how terribly short-sighted that is. How much of life do we miss by waiting to see the rainbow before thanking God that there is rain? Being grateful in times of distress does not mean that we're pleased with our circumstances. It does mean that through the eyes of faith, we look beyond our present day challenges. This is not a gratitude of the lips, but of the soul. It is a gratitude that heals the heart and expands the mind. So I submit to you this, having a daily practice of gratitude has a transforming ability if you'll put it into play. It has the ability to change the way we view the world around us. It has the ability to change how we view other people. It gives us a higher level of patience and tolerance and reverence for this mortal experience. It has the ability to brighten our day to give us meaning in every moment if we'll submit ourselves to having a daily practice of gratitude. That might start each day with, with looking around and identifying the things to be grateful for. It might be the end of your day, part of your routine, to look back on the day and what was something that stood out that you can be grateful for. Remember, this practice helps us train our mind to be able to see things in a different light has the ability to change our entire life. So on this Memorial Day, as we're able to call upon and reflect maybe easily on the lessons of the past, those who went before us to have a great love and reverence for our ancestors, for those who have served and lost their lives on our behalf, are we part of a legacy? Are we grateful for the legacy that they left behind and our role in continuing that legacy? Are we grateful for that opportunity? Are we able to see the good quickly or does it require some additional time and energy? Either way, it's an ongoing opportunity for refinement and certainly worthy of our daily practice. 
Remember that growth is always a choice. Until next week, my friends, make it a great one. And remember to always honor the gift.